Do you want to be the most hated player in Stalker Corrupted Dungeons without breaking a bank and actually have a decent win rate? Today in this video, I'm going to show you my Holy Staff build that is under 200k and it's pretty much free wins against most Corrupted Dungeon builds in Stalker Corrupted Dungeons. So if you're interested to uh, be the most hated person in the world, stay tuned. All you need really is just tier 4.1 for all of your armor sets, your weapons, your offhand, a tier 4 for your cape, and we're going to go through all of the, the skills that are needed for this build to work. All right, so the first one is the Holy Staff. This is your Holy Staff build. Again, 4.1 is more than enough. The first skill that you want to use is the Smite. The Smite is basically your damage for 90% of of the time. 90% of the time you are going to use smite and this is how it works. You basically Q and it deals damage. It casts and it deals damage. Now there is this one extra debuff that they will get. Every time you hit an enemy, it actually has that debuff on them the next time you deal damage with normal attacks or whatever it deals extra damage that is 70 all right so the smite deals initial damage within a 2.5 meter radius and the next time you hit your enemy or they take damage they will take an extra 70 damage on top of that and the biggest thing here is hitting at least one enemy will reduce the cooldown by 50 percent so look at the right uh, on the skills, if I don't hit an enemy, it is just 1.69 seconds with the Dust Hole Crab Omelette here. It's 1.69, so it's not too bad. But if you hit an enemy, it is basically almost a, an instant cooldown. So you have um, an incentive to hit your enemy, be more accurate with your Q abilities, and that's pretty much it. 95%, all right? 95% of all of your damage will come from your... Uh, smite ability. So be accurate with that as much as you possibly can. The second ability is the Sacred Pulse. The Sacred Pulse deals 263 magical damage. Um, just to give you some context, by the way, I have 20 specs. I have 20 specs in the base tree of this, and I have 10 on the node and zero on everything else. Literally the lowest spec that you can possibly have and still be uh, not really the lowest but you know what i mean you know what i mean i have extremely low specs in this one but as you will see later in this video i can get um i can decent wins i can get decent wins all right so the sacred pulse on this is both a heal and a damage but it costs a lot of energy so it just deals damage when you cast it and you usually cast it on yourself right cast it on yourself deals damage, and heals you just a little bit, just a tad. You don't want to use this to heal yourself at all. You never want to use this to heal yourself at all, all right? It is used to create some separation, and that's pretty much it. This uses a lot of energy, so use it only to create some separation. Do not spam this because you are going to run out of energy if you just keep on spamming your Sacred Pulse ability. Again, most of your damage is going to come from your Q abilities, right? If they are getting close and you want to bop them away, on PC, you press the Alt, you press the Alt key and the W key to self-cast. So it casts on yourself and just knock backs and just knocks everyone within the radius uh, away from you. Okay, so the third skill, the E ability, is to call the Desperate Prayer. Basically, it's a heal. It heals yourself, similar to how you would cast your W ability. You press the Alt button, and then press the E on your keyboard, and it will self-cast, and it will heal yourself. Now, you will see here, the Desperate Prayer actually has up to three stacks. If you cast it on yourself, it will have three stacks. Every stack that you get from the Desperate Prayer increases your heals by 5%. So, while scouting for enemies, while looking for people, right, we're looking for your opponent, use your Desperate Prayer 
doesn't really cost a lot of energy while just looking for your opponent. So cast it as much as you possibly can before you engage so that you will actually have that extra 15% heal cast bonus on your E ability. And the one of the things that you need to actually take note here is if your current health is above 40%, you actually only heal just a little bit. 227, 227 after all of the modifiers. But if your health is below 40%, you cast basically almost twice. More than twice, actually. More than twice of your, your E ability. So you heal more if you have less than 40%. The only time you want to take advantage of that is when you are brawling and your E ability is about to cool down. Your health is about to cross the 40% mark. You can wait for it. But honestly, if you're just fighting, 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 I would suggest you just use your ability, E ability whenever it's on cooldown. Fight, 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 fight. If it's on cooldown, you just use it again. Okay? You just use your Desperate Prayer whenever you possibly can uh, just to give yourself more, more time to deal more damage, not get killed instantly, and just, you know, just stop yourself up. Uh, the one thing that I forgot about the Sacred Pulse is use it to cancel abilities of your opponents. So let's say a Fire Staff with Artillery, all right? A Fire Staff with Artillery, you cancel that, get near them, use Sacred Pulse on yourself to cancel that. Uh, deflecting Spin on <clears throat> Trinity Spears, anything that channels or casts, you can cancel it using your Sacred Pulse. Okay. For the passive, I usually just do Adrenaline Driven Charity. Every four spell cast increases your healing by 20%. This is the reason why I just want you to spam your heals, basically. Spam your E ability, all right? Because you can just get heal cast, heal cast, heal cast, all right? Just get the extra healing that you can possibly get on your E ability, okay? You can also really just use this as well. Magic Force is also a very good um, passive to use because at tier four, you don't really have the Ascended and you don't really need the Ascended, but the Magic Force is also a good alternative. Every five spell casts, your auto attack knocks back the targeted enemy. So it can give you a little bit more distance. You can use this right here, okay? It means it says your next auto attack. So even if you Q, W, E, Q, look at this. Q, Q, right? Q, it resets to six. It just resets to six. So <clears throat> if you don't use it, right? If you just don't use it at all, you can keep it as a reserve so that when they use a channeling skill, you just hit normal attack and then boom, they get knocked back and canceled. Okay? That's a pretty good tip as well. Uh, for the hood, you want to use the Hunter Hood. The Hunter Hood on the Retaliate obviously increases your damage resistance for 3 seconds and reflects 85% of an incoming damage as magical damage as a cooldown of 41 seconds base with the Miscaller. But this is a very common headpiece in Corrupted Dungeons right now. You just use it when your opponent has big damages like a full cast E on a one hand fire staff, a Trinity Spear as well when they have three stacks, a dual sword when they jump on you, things like that, a bow when they have their E active, just use your Hunter Hood, basically just reflex the damage, gives you more time, stops them from attacking, gives you time to heal yourself because this has extremely low cooldowns, 9.14 here with a 4.1 Miss Caller. So it just gives you time to basically heal yourself deal damage and like create distance um for the jacket you can actually use any jacket in this one any jacket at all if you have higher specs in assassin jacket a miss walker jacket a hunter jacket whatever it is because you will use the inferno shield the same as you would use your hunter hood increase damage resistance and reflex 38 percent of the incoming damage is magical damage as well so it's basically the same for both, you want to use the Balanced Mind, which increases your damage and heal cast by 4%, and defense by 2% for the jacket, and about 1% on your 
um, helmet. So you use the first passive on both. Uh, before we go to the boots, you want to miss color. Miss color, if you don't know, just increases your cooldown rate, meaning you can cast skills a lot faster than if you don't have the miss color. Basically, is what it means, and it affects all of the skills that you have in your uh, skill slots, even the Inferno Shield, Hunterhood, and lastly, the Sandals of Purity. The Sandals of Purity recently got buffed just a tad. It got increased the movement speed by 10% from 50% to 60% and also grants you immunity to roots and slows. So the main advantage of this really is no food, just miss color, has a cooldown of 9.14 seconds. Now pay attention here to the right. If I use my boots, it increases my speed, immunes me to roots and slows, and it also cools down while I'm using it. It is a channeling skill, so don't spam your F ability. Just press F, get the movement speed, and look at that. It cools down as I'm using it. So basically, you have 60% mobility every 6 seconds if you want to. It is a good way to chase your opponent, create some distance, and overall, because of that low, low cooldown, then you just basically spam it. Create distance, chase, or whatever. Okay? And whenever you're chasing, when they try to pop those memphits that slows you down, before you get over that, you just press this and you're immune to slows and roots. So you're immune to the ray of light from the bow, you're immune to desecrate on the curse staff. So if you're trying to chase, you're immune to those, you cannot be slowed, you cannot be rooted. You can be stunned though, but it's still a pretty good way to chase your opponents or create some distance. Really, really good. Really, really good weapon. Are, it's a really good um, cloth sandals here. Sandal superiority. And also the aggression. The passive that you want on your boots is aggression. Increases all of your damage and heal cast by 3.5%. Okay. So um, for the potions, you want to use healing pots. Uh, doesn't really matter how much or how many items you want to bring, how many potions you want to bring, or what tier. Just bring healing pots, and also energy potions. Energy potions are used mainly if you go against other healers. Because against other healers, it is going to be a longer fight. You are going to run out of energy, even with the limb escape. You're going to run out of energy, and you want the energy pots as a reserve. You know, it's not your main. You are going to still need... Uh, the healing pots equipped most of the time, but as a reserve, the energy pots actually is a really good option. All right, so let's look at the cape and the food because there are two options here. For the first one, for the limb escape, as I said, this is a mana hungry um, build. You will need some sort of energy regeneration, and energy reserve on the limb escape is actually really, really good. All right, it just activates whenever. You use a, a ca you cast a spell, and your energy drops below forty percent. It just regenerates over nine seconds, eighty percent. That's that. When you want to use a limb escape, go with the pork omelet. Pork omelet is the one that it decreases or increases your cooldown rate. Actually, increases your cooldown rate and increases your cast speed, so you can cast a lot faster. Your Q basically just your Q has the cast speed. Everything else doesn't, so you can cast more. It can cast faster, actually, with the Pork Omelette, right? And it uh, increases your cooldown rate as well, meaning you can spam more of your abilities. Now, there's also one thing, and I actually prefer this over the Limberscape Pork Omelette combo, is the Dust Hole Crab Omelette and the Thetford Cape. Now, the Dust Hole Crab Omelette, to those who do not know, is basically a toned-down version of a Pork Omelette, but it has an additional buff, basically. It reduces your energy cost by 11.3% on top of increased cast speed and increased cooldown rate, uh, similar to how the Park Omelette does, but just a little bit, a little lower. So this is 9.5, 7.56 when it comes to cast speed and cooldown rate. This is 13.5 cast speed and 10%, 10.8% cooldown rate. All right, that's 30.5 and 10.8. This is 9.5 and 7.56. But the most important part here is your energy cost reduction 
of 11.3%, which again, helps you <clears throat> with your energy issues, plus the Thetford Cape with the normal attack. Uh, I'm pretty sure everyone knows what the Thetford Cape does. Every 15 seconds, all right, you will, if you use a normal attack, it deals damage to your opponent, like a lightning thingy, 173. So if you are using this specific build right here, all right, just this specific build with the Thetford Cape, just remember to use your normal attack. Obviously, your Thetford Cape cooldown is on your status symbol. Pay attention to that. As soon as it cools down, as soon as it cools down, use your normal attack. It deals more damage. And also at the same time, it triggers the second part of the smite, which deals more damage. And that's pretty much it. What you want to do really in, in this situation is... Just use your Q ability, use your Q ability, maintain distance. If they're getting close, use your pulse to create some separation. Use your E ability whenever it is on cooldown. If they're trying to brawl, I would use the Inferno Shield first. All right, use the Inferno Shield, keep on fighting, keep on fighting. Once your Inferno Shield is done, use your Hunter Hood if they're still attacking, right? And for the healing potion, I would actually use it almost... Not immediately, but as soon as your health drops to like 60%, use your healing potion right away so that it goes on cooldown and you can still fight. And whenever you feel like you're in trouble, just hover, hover, run, pulse, and hover, and run around again. If they're trying to do run away, which they will most of the time, just hover towards them. You have the... You have an insane mobility just with this hover right here because of the cooldown alone. The cooldown and the speed immunes you to slows and roots. You have a very good mobility with this weapon that is not supposed to be mobile. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And uh, just a disclaimer here, you are going to receive a lot of salty messages when you're using this. If you win, if you lose, you're just going to get a lot of salty messages. Just ignore them if you can and just say GG or just mute them if it's, it's getting a little too much. But you got to give this a shot. This is a really cheap build. This overall is 178. 178. This limb escape with pork omelet is 156. So it's a little cheaper. I really recommend though using the Thetford Cape and the Dust Hole Crab Omelet for 178. It's really good. Uh, if you want to add the cost of this is 182. That's not still sub 200k. And it definitely will help you climb up the infamy ladder. Again, just a lot of salty messages coming your way. Enjoy the rest of the video. Oh shit, we're not good. Oh my god. That's a big mistake. Big mistake, wasn't it? Yay! GG! Oh, 500k! Very interesting to say the least.
I even cancel that, no way. We got seven bats. I guess this is the only downside to using a holy staff. Oh yeah, I'm immune to roots. I'm actually immune to roots, that's right. GG, sir. All right. Kachira. Oh, that's 250k. Nah, that's what I was talking about. That was so what I was talking about. Oh, for real? He went back? Interesting. Do we actually have a slight mobility advantage? GG, sir. Alright, everything trashed. Is he trapped? I think he's trapped. I'm sorry. GG, sir. That's not too bad. Kill him with normal attacks. Kill him with normal. Oh shit. He got exploded. Oh, that's actually a decent loot. I don't think this will end. Mm. 
You ran out of energy. Just ran out of energy. Oh, he switched. It's actually smart. Shit, 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 shit. Okay. Did you?
Very smart. Very smart. I don't know why you did that, but sure. You went there, sir. <clears throat> yeah, that was a bad decision. It's the wrong hat on. That's the wrong hat ability. trapped himself voluntarily too <laughs> this is kind of odd a little odd not gonna lie he voluntarily trapped himself threw me off a little bit not gonna lie I equipped the wrong shit. Gigi. 